If you're thinking about having Botox masseter injections, watch this video first because I'm going to tell you about the scary side effect that nobody is talking about and happened to me. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amy and on my channel I dive deep into beauty, skincare and cosmetic treatments. And today I have a great video for you all and I'm going to be sharing too much sparkling water. Today I'm sharing my personal experience having Botox injected into my masseter muscle, aka the jaw muscle, the chewing muscle, and I'm going to be telling you about the scary side effect that happened to me and why I will never do this procedure ever again. But first, let's go over the basics. What is Botox? For those of you who don't know and have been living under a rock, Botox is a neurotoxin that was FDA approved in 2002 that works by paralyzing muscles and preventing them from contracting. Originally used as a wrinkle smoother because if, it, if the muscle can't contract, it can't crease the skin, aka creating the wrinkle. But now Botox is used for an array of different things, anything from neck spasms, you know, cross eyes, twitching eyes, excessive armpit sweating, excessive palm sweating, and those are just some of the FDA approved uses. There's a whole array of 70 different off-label uses for Botox, and one of those off-label uses is Botox masseter injections. So when I talked to board certified facial plastic surgeon, Dr. Alexander Rivkin of Westside Aesthetics, and I was asking him about Botox masseter injections and why it's been gaining in popularity, he said that most of us grind our teeth at night or we clench during the day. It's just, you know, a result of stress. So he said that what happens is you don't really notice that you clench or you grind your teeth when you're younger because there's no evidence of it. But when it happens and it builds up over years and years and years, then once you're older you start to see the results of that a bulkier lower face um, a more prominent jaw muscle and so a lot of people are having Botox injected into their masseter muscle to have the muscles atrophy to create a softer looking face and create a more feminine oval shape to the face. Now that we've gone over the basics, I want to share with you my story and why I recommend anyone who is thinking about doing this procedure to tread with caution. You say you're sorry and you're leaving. Don't think we'll work out and it's just a feeling. I've always had a really round, full face and prominent jawline. That's just my anatomy and I've always loved it. It's just that over the years from a lot of intense clenching and teeth grinding due to anxiety and stress, my masseter muscle really began to bulk up. It started to make my, the lower half of my face look heavy and my, my face shape changed from being round to being more of a square. To show you what I mean, here's a picture of me in 2007 and you can see here that my face shape is you know, very similar to how it is today. Now here's a picture of me from 2014. And in this image, it's more angular, my jawline's very prominent, and the lower half of my face is very, very bulky. So when I learned that you could do Botox injections into your jawline to make your face look more feminine and oval, and I would be able to get rid of this bulky but masseter muscle, I was like, sign me up, but where can I get on board with this? I was like, this is freaking awesome. Yes, I'm gonna do it. At the time that I found out too, it was 2014 and I was engaged and I was in that whole wedding glow up, wanting to look my best. So I decided three months before my wedding to have this done. So I went to my dermatologist who I trust a lot and felt really confident that they would do a good job. And so he told me that he recommended 15 units of Botox on either side and that's actually towards the lower end of the spectrum, people get anywhere from 10 to 50 units of Botox. And so I was getting 15 on either side, 30 total. And I felt like that was pretty conservative. So when you're injecting Botox to smooth out wrinkles like on the forehead or around the eyes, the results are almost instant. But when it comes to using Botox for facial contouring, the results aren't that instant because you have to wait for the muscle to atrophy. They told me that results would be anywhere from one to three months, I would see the full result. By the time the three month mark rolled around, it was time for my wedding. Here's a little pic of that. And I was very, very pleased with the result. 
I like the way that my cheekbones look lifted, my lower face and my just looked a little bit hollowed, but not too much. So I went back to my dermatologist and I asked him, okay, this is great, I love it, but I don't wanna keep having to come back and do this. Do I have to do it every three to five months when the Botox wears off to get the result to last? And he told me that they had actually seen studies where if the treatment was done three times over the course of a year, so spaced out every four months, that they were seeing really long lasting results. And so when I heard that, I was like, let's do it, let's do it. I'm on board, sign me up. So after I got married in 2015, I did it two more times, another 30 and then another 30. And I was feeling pretty good about myself. My jawline was looking slim. Um, I just liked the way that it looked. It wasn't bulky. My teeth grinding was completely gone. And everything was happy and happy until things just went downhill so fast. I was... I was shocked. After my last treatment, a month or two passed, and I started to notice severe hollowing of my face. I'm talking severe, like I looked gaunt. Here's a photo, check this out, this is me. And this was just a few months after, okay? My face kept getting thinner and thinner and hollower and hollower. It was almost indented back here because the muscle had completely atrophied almost down to like nothing it all I could I could feel the bone back here so I went back to my dermatologist and I just explained what had been happening and he was like we were very conservative which we were with the units it just seemed that my body had kind of a delayed response or that the Botox was lasting longer in me. So instead of it wearing off after three to four months, maybe it kept going and lasting for five or six months. And we had compounded that by adding more Botox and more Botox a second time. So it was a really awful period after that. I never, I avoided social engagements. I just hid out at home. I never wanted to go anywhere. I hated the way I looked. I looked in the mirror and I almost didn't even recognize who I was. Like my face looked so hollowed out. It just changed the way I looked completely and I wasn't sure what to do. I was like, holy shit, this is a, this is a decision that I've made that has resulted in a consequence that I'm unhappy with and may have to live with the rest of my life. You're probably thinking, that's the end of the story, Amy. It can't get any worse than that. Well, I'm here to tell you it did get worse and it got a lot worse. Now we're entering 2016 and my face is so thin and hollow and my masseter muscle has completely atrophied down nothing on both sides. And now my skin on the lower half of my face begins to sag. So imagine that your skin is a tent. It's the tent tarp and our skeleton and our muscles and our fat are the tent poles. They give structure to the tent. They keep it taut and tight and they give it lift. Imagine that you take those poles and you make them smaller, shorter, or maybe you take some of those poles out completely. What happens to the tent tarp that's laying on top? What's it gonna do? It's gonna sag in areas. It's not gonna be tight and firm like it was before. And that is what was happening to my skin. That's why I was getting all of the sagging on the lower part of my face. So I ended up doing a bunch of skin tightening treatments. I did all therapy, I did different Fraxel lasers to try to tighten my skin and it helped a little bit, but it wasn't getting to the underlying issue. So it wasn't able to fully correct it. So that was 2016. It's now 2019 and my face has finally rebounded. It's not completely back to where it was before I had the Botox injections, but it's actually a clo it's closer now to the shape that I had in 2007 that I showed you. I'm just really grateful too, actually, that my teeth grinding is so bad. <laughs> AKA I'm stressed the fuck out all the time. Uh, um, I'm so glad that my teeth grinding is really intense because it built back my muscle. It took three years to build it back, but now I look in the mirror and I see my old self again. And it's really given me my confidence back and it's 
this whole experience has taught me to be ultra conservative and just tread on the side of caution at all times when it comes to doing cosmetic procedures. So I'm happy to share my experience with any of you out there looking into this procedure. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. It helps me out so much. And I hope that you will I never know which way to point. Okay, hit that subscribe button and tune in next week for another beauty, skincare, or cosmetic treatment deep dive here on my channel with me.